Hey everyone, I love a good shop tour. I love to see what people have done in their shops and learn what they like about it and what they would have done differently. So let's do the same thing today. So I've got two main sections to my shop and this small section in here is really where I do all the dirty work. So if it's gonna generate dust or sparks or I'm using paint, gets done in this space here. And it's probably, I don't know, 12 foot by 12 foot and it's really just a pass-through area from my yard into my main shop through here so it was always intended to be able to drive through here into the back shop but i've accumulated too much stuff which is fine but uh, this space is the dirty space so i've got oxy gear i've got band saw i've got a cold saw here and on these benches here you'll often see me in the videos uh, chopping stuff up, sanding, filing, whatever. And this is the space where I do all that dirty work. So I really wanna keep all my dust and paint and sparks and everything out of my main shop. That's the objective, it doesn't always work, but that's the objective. So that's about it in this space, pretty straightforward. Let's head into the main shop. Now this is just a simple three car uh, kit garage and I slapped this up with a few mates over a couple of weekends, probably 10 years ago now, and then had the concrete floor laid through the whole area. So this is the main shop where you'll see most of the action in my videos. So uh, this centre section was, again, was always intended to be able to drive through and put a car in here. At the time I did have a project car, which I've now sold but this space was intended for a car. So what I've done on either side, I've got an island bench either side of the center. And that means I could, the intention was have a car in here and have a space to work on either side. Now we've got two bike stands and we've still got the island benches. So just a quick look around, this whole wall's filled with shelving and that's just shelving I knocked up with some, you know, square tube section and some angle iron. And then inside that angle iron, I've just put some chipboard shelves and I've just used these plastic tubs. They're not that expensive here in Australia, about six bucks each. So I just load a lot of stuff into those and put a label on them and away we go. Now, they're not particularly durable. If you put anything really heavy in them, they will break, but they're really cheap. So I just chuck them out and buy new ones. So really this whole wall is just storage. Some of it's shop related stuff and some of it's stuff that's come out of the house, which I try and avoid obviously, but can't do that completely so uh, that's that wall now just between the doorways so here's the doorway coming through from the uh, other shop and there's a small access door over here as well um, when I assembled this obviously this big door was in the center but that one I could put anywhere and I just got lucky and the space is just wide enough for me to fit my lathe in here so all of my machine tools I keep covered and that's mainly because I don't want anything to damage the ways or the machine beds or anything delicate. So lathe stays covered up. You've seen this in other videos. I've got a whole series of restoration videos on this particular lathe and about 10 videos showing how I put together this you know, very detailed lathe bench as well. Right, so that's the lathe bench. So back to the bench we've got here. So this is a standard eight by four sheet of steel on the top and if I pop down a bit here, so I've constructed this just out of two inch or 50 millimeter square tube, just welded all together. So great welding projects for, for learning, uh, practicing your welding skills. But just about all my benches have got this uh, MDF, medium density fiber board top on it. And these are about 32 millimeters, that's inch and a quarter. And not that expensive here in Australia. I think they're about $65 a sheet when I bought it. So that's probably 10 years ago. Um, but the reason I like this is it's very heavy, so it provides a lot of stability to the bench. Um, it's easy to cut if you need to, and it's replaceable too. You can chuck it out and replace it if you really have to. Now, I've skinned this particular bench with two millimeter steel, and the idea there is I could put parts on this bench directly, and at the other end here, I've hooked up a lead off the bench, and that's used to ground this two millimeter steel plate. So you can see those four little heat marks there. So there's a stud welded on the back of that steel uh, sheet and it's connected 
to this point here. So I just took up my ground on here and the top of the bench is a hole, is a return for the welding circuit. So that works really well. So this is probably a bench where I'll do any welding and you would have seen that in other videos. So the camera gear is set up because I'm about to start shooting some more training videos. So past the shelving and into the next side of the wall. So this is another bench I've picked up somewhere else. It was already made, it was that size, I just kept it. Um, and I just stuck it on the wall. And generally it was a storage area, but I've cleaned it up now and I am using it for other purposes. Underneath I've just got a rack, timber rack that I've made just to store some tires and wheels. Just some shelving to store some front ends. Again, this is all just junk that was lying around. Um, an old oven. So this I picked up for 20 bucks on eBay. Come out of a business somewhere, so it's pretty much unused. And I've got a powder coating gun, which at some point I'll get into a bit more, and I'm gonna use this oven for powder coating. I also use it for drying sand, if I'm using sand for tube bending or other projects. So uh, pretty handy and really cheap at the time. So on the wall above this bench, I've been picking up these just quite cheap storage units. These ones are about 20 bucks. They're all just Chinese ones. And these ones are quite a bit better quality. They're Australian made ones, but they're about 30 or 40 dollars each. Uh, and I just got lucky that two of these units and one of these units pretty much takes up a four foot sheet of plywood, which is on the back here. So. You will notice that all my walls and ceiling are all lined with plasterboard and behind that is rock wool so that's great for insulation so this space is great in summer and in winter because in summer when it can get to plus 40 outside it's a lot cooler in here and in winter it's a lot warmer as well the only downside is you can't hang anything off plasterboard so if i did this again i might use plasterboard on the ceilings but I would put plywood all the way around the walls. And I've had to do that in this location here. So there's plywood up behind um, this cabinet. So I've had to use something to strengthen the wall to hang this particular cabinet off. So I've used plywood sheet and then I've just used the plywood to hang the rest of these off to support them. So they're all pinned to the wall so they won't go anywhere. Um, and above that, just a cheap set of shelves I made out of some half inch plywood just to carry some light equipment, just some tanks. And these steel cabinets are great. I love them because they're not very deep. They're only about six inches deep. So you don't lose too much space at the back of the shelves. And I've just got them stacked up with, with hardware. So they're not full yet, but I've got room for expansion. And I only buy these when they're on special. So like two for 90 bucks or something like that. So uh, really handy. And I've got a couple of these around the place. So continuing around, um, just along the walls, so I've just got some other tooling along the wall. So 20 tonne hydraulic press, got this second hand off eBay. Like nothing I buy is pretty much new. And this is really, really useful. So just, you know, when you need a press, I've got one here. So a couple hundred bucks, second hand off eBay. Um, also my English wheel, which again is under a cover because I don't really want the uh, anvil wheels getting anything on them like dust or any sparks or dirt or anything like that which would damage the surfaces so these stay under a cover and pretty much before I put the cover on I just spray them all with a pretty heavy coat of WD-40 and that is supposed to you know just protect them a little bit and make sure we don't get too much surface rust if any I don't want any rust on these so English wheel shrinker stretcher uh, this is just a homemade um, oil burning heater for the shop in winter works okay um, this particular wall, I've just got a whiteboard, just a poster from a car show, but that's all unused space. So I'm thinking, always thinking about how to better use the space. So above these, I'm thinking of making a, a wheel and tire rack in this area above and just hang wheels and tires along there. And then I can use that same space under that bench and put another tool cabinet or something in there later on. Right, I'm moving along. Uh, just an old second hand uh, steel filing cabinet. Just keeps a lot of my project files and manuals and things like that. And on top of that is a surface plate. So it's a granite surface plate, which I use for marking out. Not essential, but handy. I got it, again, got it in, on eBay, pretty cheap. Um, it was local, so I had to go and pick it up because it weighs a lot. So I got it cheap because of that. Um, parts washer. Um, don't buy one this big. It's overkill for motorcycle work. I bought it online, I didn't really measure it out on the floor before I picked it up, it was pretty cheap, so I just bought it. It's 
probably good for cars if you put a whole cylinder head in there if you needed to but for motorcycles it's a bit overkill so you can buy a smaller one probably about that big and that'd be perfectly adequate for bike work and it doesn't take up as much space on your floor either so moving around all this gear on the far wall so this is the other end of the workshop now so this all looks pretty fancy but it's just two flat pack kitchen kits that I bought and uh, it basically comes with one of these sets of wall cabinets some floor cabinets with some drawers um, and a single uh, tall like a pantry cupboard so I bought two of them that was I spent a bit of money on this um, but the, the reason I did that is here in Melbourne it's really windy and no matter how good I seal up the doors and things in the, my shop I always get heaps and heaps of dust in here and it drives me insane because you've always got to clean everything before you use it so I really want everything behind cupboards or in drawers so that it minimizes how much cleaning I have to do to keep everything in good condition so these are just dirty old plain white kitchen cupboards and all I've done is I've whacked them all up and I've used grey paint and red paint and another 32 millimetre MDF top and I've decked it out like this. So this works a lot better. I've got books in here, I've got power tools in here and all sorts of stuff. So this works really well for me. Right, so moving along the wall here, I've just used this free space along here. I built this rack some time ago but I quite like having uh, things on rolls that are easy to access like this so I think I'll probably extend this probably along the bench a bit further and put other things that are on rolls like masking tape and other things like that and this works great so it's right under the window so this is a really good natural lighting position so and I've, I've made that specifically so that I've got my desk space and a chair under the window just for the light so the light coming through is pretty good as you can see in the camera Okay, still moving along, pretty much absolutely essential tool in my shop is uh, internet connected PC. So just hiding in one of these cupboards is a, just an ancient Dell Windows XP machine that uh, I use for a couple of reasons. One is just to keep the tunes playing in the shop. And secondly, if I need to do some research on a project and Google something or print something out, I've got a cheap laser printer, internet connected computer, and my tunes are playing in the shop. So uh, it just saves me doing it off my phone and I really just like having this here. So just a simple bracket for the uh, wireless keyboard and mouse and just an aluminium bracket I made hanging off this wall here just to hold a monitor. So that's pretty useful. This thing's got a sink just for washing hands and uh, basic cleaning, maybe some paint off a paintbrush or something, so that's pretty handy as well. It is connected to a hot water service in the other building, so I have got hot water here too, which is pretty useful. So, on this final wall, before we get back to the doorway, I have got uh, the drilling machine, which you've seen in other videos, um, and a couple of bench grinders on stands that I've made as well. And I mean, I use bench grinders in my projects all the time and one bench grinder is great but two is ten times better and I've got this one set up with a wire wheel and a spindle for buffing wheels and this one set up with a grinding stone and one of these multi-tool attachments with a belt on it and it's just some accessories hanging on the wall I don't really like this space it's not a great use of this particular space I'm limited by the circuit board for the uh, shop that hangs on the wall here so I think in the future I will change this. I'll probably get another sort of rolling cabinet and mount it down the bottom here and then just build a frame over the top and then just mount these on top of that because the space down here is pretty much wasted. And up here I need a, something better to do with this space here. I might end up getting another one of those uh, cabinets, something similar to that and mount that on this wall just to use the space a bit better. So. Pegboard's okay, but it's not great, so something for the future. Now on this island bench, on this side of the shop, um, again, just some shelves and everything underneath. Similar construction, just steel tube, 32 millimeter MDF. This one's got 1.6 millimeter uh, steel on it. I never intended to weld on this particular bench. It was more for doing projects on, so I had a hard, smooth surface 
and I just keep it wiped down with some WD-40 and that keeps it in pretty good condition. And just in that, on this corner or this end of the bench is my small uh, milling machine. So there's a small bench top milling machine here which gets a bit of use. And under that same cover is a very small CNC router which I'm using to teach myself a little bit about CNC. Uh, eventually I'd like to convert this guy to CNC to punch out parts, but I'm just learning at the moment. So I've got a small machine I bought off eBay, which you know once I've done what I need to do, I'll probably flip it again as well. So on the other side of this bench down here is what's called a magna bend, which is a magnetic folder. These were an Australian invention a few years back, and I got this guy uh, on eBay non-functional and I got it going again so it was a great tool so really rather than uh, having a clamp to hold the uh, material down before you fold fold it up this one's got a big electromagnet in it so you need to connect it to power and the electromagnet holds this top plate down and then you can fold against it so pretty cool invention and again I, I got it cheap on eBay and I fixed it because it wasn't working so I'm a winner Okay, so other than that, just against the doorway here, because I never opened this doorway very far, it only needs to be open far enough to get bikes in and out. So I just store my roller and cabinet here with all my own hand tools in it, and my TIG welding machine is in here, and I've got the compressor indoors as well, because I've just serviced that, and I've just done that couple of videos back uh, about the compressor as well. So these guys just staying in here for the moment. Uh, only because I've got the floor space to keep them in here. So if you look around the shop, there's a couple of places where there's a bit of free space. So above the lathe, that wall's pretty good because that's pretty much shelving all the way to the top. Over there is pretty good so far. But in this area here, there's still a lot of space that's not very well utilised. So again, I'm thinking about a tie rack up the top there. This side's not too bad. I've got stuff on top of the shelving. We've got a bit of space up there, but that's not a big showstopper. And then coming back around here where I talked about the bench grinders, I do want to do something with this. So I consider this shop, it's always you know, under construction. There's always something new I can do. I'm always looking for ways to improve it and use the space as, as efficiently as possible. So a couple of other things I'll probably mention is the concrete in this floor is the concreter who did this whole job all the way out the front, down the driveway and everything, he's trailed in the expansion joints here and these just collect tons and tons and tons of rubbish and it's a real pain to keep them clean so if you're going to get a concrete floor done rather than have them trail in the expansion joints get them to saw cut the joints so the floor should be completely level and they can saw cut in the expansion joints i've also coated this with a two-part epoxy finish which is fantastic so i'd recommend that a couple of reasons it's easy to clean so you can just mop it sweep it to get the dust off and then you can mop it to get anything else off it um, it is really slippery when it's wet, but you just got to suck it up and be a bit more careful. So epoxy floor is great. So do that if you get a chance. Other than that, that's about all I can think of at the moment. So if you've got any questions about how I laid out the shop or any lessons that uh, you want to hear a bit more about, drop us a comment below. Talk to you soon. Cheers.